Hi and welcome to a, a new episode. What I want to do is say thank you very much to everyone that sent well wishes while I've been away for the past three weeks and keeping tabs on how well I'm doing. That was very nice of you to do so. But what I want to do is get going again with these videos <laughs> yet again and show you what's inside this Amiga. What I've got is an MSATA 240GB um, card and I want it to go towards IDE so that the Amiga can use it. Now some people have been asking me how I've set all this up before. Now I'm not going to show you step by step because there's really no point for me to do that because there's so many videos out there that explain how to install Amiga OS on the Amiga, especially 3.1.4 and the upgrade 3.1.4.1 and also how to get it going in WinUA. Um, so I'm not going to show you the fine details, but I'm going to show you the, the bits that you may find interesting to be able to get that going with the knowledge that you should already have. Or if you haven't, I'll put some links in below to where I got some more of my information and also some videos that I've seen since that explain it just as well as what I would do, if not better. Now, what I want to point out is the tool, the HD toolbox because obviously you're going to be interested in how I've set up the partitions. Now, what we have is the Kingston and it's 240 gigabytes, a partition drive, and we've got DH0, DH1, and I've made a bit of a typo here, so let's change this to DH2. But the point is though, is that here we have these settings, obviously you want the first one to be bootable, it'll do all this for you straight away when you're doing it anyway, but to change and make sure that this is 4096 so that it loads the blocks of information a lot faster than just at 512. I'm leaving this at uh, long names turned off on the workbench part of it because I have come across previously some old programs that don't like long file names and it gets confused. Um, so I, this means that I've got a partition where if long names are a problem I can always install it here and if it's not I can install it elsewhere on the other partitions. So we've got 50 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes just to prove that I do have long file names from 4096 and for the last partition we have 75 gigabytes and again long file names 4096. So we just click on away from all that. I need to save the changes because I did make a bit of a typo before. Exit. So that we do have the two partitions already. And when you've done that, of course, you have to format it and everything, but make sure that you format it um, in this way. So, where is the format? There we go. Obviously I don't need to change this, but the we change this to HDD and then you would oops and then you would have the trash can, fast file system, on file names and click quick format. You don't need to do the main format because that would take forever. Um, so just do a quick format, it's more than good enough. So that's what we've got anyway from there. And then obviously what we need to do is to get files across to there now that we've got this all installed. Some of the eagle eyed upon you will notice that I've got best workbench installed or best WB. I think that's a really good version to have on top of uh, 3.1.4. Um, I'll leave a link in the description down below for that as well. But what we want to do is actually get files across. So what I'll do is turn off the Amiga and show you it uh, full size. So I've turned off the Amiga and I'm carefully flipping the keyboard out of the way. Just making sure I don't press everything. I've gone and broken the little leg bit here off of the GoTech caddy that uh, I've got. So I need to reprint one of those out. But here's the MSATA drive and the adapter. As you can see, it takes quite a space. 
um, I'm using the the sled from the original Amiga just so that there's no connection in between the bottom of this PCB and the rest of the Amiga. I have put a heatsink on the little chip that's there. I have no idea if it's needed or not, but the Amiga can get quite warm in here and there's no active fan like there would be in a PC. So just in case, you know, it, it doesn't harm putting one on, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm not too sure you actually need one. So what we're going to do is remove that MSATA drive. So what we'll do is take these two screws out and we'll do this all in real time just to show how easy it is. So if you want to skip past that's your opinion or your choice. I just want to show how easy it is. So that's sticking up in the air at the moment but what I want to do is to show you this. So I have this little caddy it's a USB 3.1, well worth the money to spend uh, to get one of these and especially over the version 3.0 um, because you get a USB-C connection which makes life a lot easier trying to connect it up all the time and also if you do have 3.1 it will go at full speed and if you don't well who's to say you're not going to in the future and for me it was just a few pound difference um, so a few dollars difference, a few euros difference and so on um, so I highly recommend you just get it anyway because at some point in the future you probably will end up with 3.1 on your PC. So let's get that on here. Just put the shell to the side for a moment. Take this off of here. Slide that on there. Put the little screws in. Please don't do this over the top of the an Amiga that's already turned on or anything like that because if you do drop the screw you could cause a short and that would mean very bad things for your Amiga. Okay so that's nicely screwed in there and then we take the caddy the only the front part the screws at the back as well but you don't need to touch those just take the screws off the front little panel slide it in and then the front part that goes on so we're looking at it front ways on now and to the bottom right there's a little bit of um, LED there and on the front there is a little hole for it as well so we need to line that up whichever way around it goes because it does sort of look like at first it would go any which way around but there's actually a blue LED sat right there to let you know that you've got power and you've got it hooked up and if you thought the screws for the other one were small these are really small and very fiddly so you might need a little bit of help to line all this up if you've not too dexterous get one side screwed down Get the other screw in there. Let's like say I'm doing this all real time just to show how easy it actually is. So there we go. One MSATA hard drive USB gadgety thing. So we connect this up to the PC. So let's go across to that now. Here at the PC we start up Win UAE. I've got a configuration file already set up, so I'm just going to load that up and show you what bits you need to be setting. Under CPU and FPU, I've got fastest as possible and slid all the way across. The reason why I've done this is because I just wanted to go as fast as possible. I'm not interested about accuracy for when it comes to playing computer games or something like that, because obviously I've got a real Amiga. All I want to do is just copy this across for files. I'll set this up for files. AGA for the chipset. Advanced tip set, nothing to set here. For ROM, of course, what we've got to do is set up the 3.1.4 because we want to be able to be loading up exactly the same way. RAM, let's throw in 128 megabytes. Floppies, we don't really need them, but let's just leave one active. 
For the hard drives, this is the fiddly bit. So let's add a hard drive and then find the Kingston 240. Here it is. Click hard drive and then we need to add a directory. So let's put in DH4 and then PC stuff. And then we need to select the folder. Oops, sorry, we need to then we need to make sure it's not bootable. Then we need to select a folder and then we click OK. And then we can go back to configurations and save it and actually start the emulator. This take a little while to boot up, but it does boot up. It gives that error because I've got the drivers for the 40 IDE. You don't necessarily get that error, but if you do, just click OK. So we're just going to prove that the files that actually need to be copied across. So we load up the HDD and then we load up PC stuff. To see the files that are there, we need to slide down under window and then show all files. And just for this example, I'm going to copy across this demo folder, just so that you get an idea how quickly it does actually copy across. Okay, I'm replacing some files, but it's still the same speed. On my computer, as I said before, I do have USB 3.1. I did find that trying to stick this into a I'd caddy um, didn't seem to work with USB 3. If anything, it caused very bad problems. I did use a USB 2 one. Um, that did work, but it was very, very, very slow. So I gave this a punt on using the USB 3.1 MSAT R to USB directly. And as you can see, it copies across beautifully. Stay with me, it does do it pretty well. Just a little bit more now. And there we go, completely copied across, just to prove that it is actually on there. Again, we need to show all files. Now, obviously it is possible to make these folders show up, but what you have to do is mess around and create a .info file for them. There's plenty of other channels and information on the internet on how to do that. All I'm doing is showing you that it is possible to get a 240 gigabyte um, MSAT hard drive going. So we just close all this down. You press F12 for WinAU and then you can click quit. And now you just disconnect your USB and go back to the Amiga. Okay, so we've got the MSAT R card back inside the Amiga. Flip the keyboard across very carefully. Zoom back out and show you the Amiga booting up. There we go. Should get a picture anytime soon. You can see the little lights flashing away. I really am looking forward to getting the pimped out case, but I'm still waiting on that, like everybody else. As you can see, it's booted up, so we go to the HDD, show files, or files, and there it is, easily accessible, so I want to clean that up a bit. So clean up by name and then we snapshot that and there we go. Everything's there. Everything needs unpacking but the point is is that the files are there and it was very easy to get them across very quickly. So now I can mess around and add anything else that I want to add and then close up the Amiga again and be all happy that everything's all nicely going. I hope that was somewhat informative. If I've missed something or there is a better way of doing it or there's some setting that I've missed, please let me know. 
because obviously it'd be nice to have this going as fast as possible with the kit that I've got. I don't have an accelerator card anymore, it's just a extra memory and a few other funny things that you can do with it. I might explain that at a later date, but for now that's it. So as always, happy gaming!